I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday, March 7th, the year is 2022, and this is a YouTube live streaming event. I am honored that you are here, whether it's your very first time visiting or you are here returning to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Now, part of the fun of live streaming is having you here with us, and tonight I have a pop-up card that has an acetate feature that's very interactive that I cannot wait to teach you how to make. Now, tonight's live stream is going to include some moderation so that you can interact with us live. In addition to that, it's also going to include a free project sheet. So let me talk to you a little bit about both of those first. When tonight's live stream is over, you're going to be able to come down to the video description below and click on a link that will take you to a full project sheet that will include the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and the supplies for tonight's fun fold card. But stick around because you're going to want to see the additional six cards that I have to share with you tonight. And four of those are fun folds. And they're all part of this month's online card class. Now let's talk about here in the live chat if you are streaming with us live. I would like to introduce you to Gina curcio Holly. You'll see Gina's name here in blue and a little wrench next to her name. She is my daughter, but she's also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio. She has been stamping with me the entire 23 years that I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And she's here to help interact with you while I'm stamping because I can't do both. So she'll be able to answer your questions and provide you with links. Now, if you want to chat with us, we would love to have you do so. But YouTube requires that you log into your Gmail account in order to leave a comment or to chat with us live. I come back and I read every single one. So I would love to hear from you. All right, before we get started, I have some exciting news to share with you, and that is this. If you have not heard about the online stamping retreat that I have partnered with Kylie and Bruno Bertucci in Australia, Gina and I will be stamping live for a full day of fun events. I want to thank so many of you who have already registered. It has been overwhelming, the response. We have so much stuff, uh, we have so much stuff in store for you that day. I'm super excited about this event, can you tell? It's on March 26th here in the US, which would be March 27th in Australia. But guess what? It doesn't matter what country you live in, we would love to have you join us live. $45 is going to get you all the live streaming events or you can watch them on replay if you don't wanna stay up all night with us. And again, there are lots of PDF tutorials for over 30 project ideas that we are gonna share with you. You can get all the information over on the website at onlinestampingretreat.podia.com. All right, let's get stamping. I'm going to bring in first the paper trimmer tonight because we're going to need to do a little bit of scoring. Now, I already made a couple little marks on these two pieces because they look like a square, but they're not. They are actually five and a quarter by five and a half. And on camera, it looks virtually the same. Ah, Bruno Bertucci, thank you for joining us tonight. So I want you to take the five and a quarter inch side along the top. Now I love the paper trimmer because I don't do anything straight. And this little trimmer has a little ledge here at the top and at the bottom that's going to keep your cardstock straight. It includes both the scoring and the cutting blade and they navigate up and down out of the way so that you can keep them on the trimmer at the same time. I love that this is clear because if you've watched any of my videos before, you've noticed that I've done fun folds where sometimes we need an angle cut or an angle crease. And this is beautiful for that. There are some dimensions on the right and a whole bunch on the left. And there's an extension arm that goes just past 17 inches. Now I need a one inch on one side and I'm going to flip this because I'm going to make it easier. So again, this is the four and a quarter inch side. I'm going to open up that trimmer and I'm going to do it this way. So there's a one inch line here. Just gives me more cardstock to hold on this side. So I'm looking to line it up and then we're going to score. So that's this one. And then I'm going to come over and I'm going to do the exact same thing now on this one, one inch, and then we are going to score. The only thing you need to remember is you need to score down on the five and a half inch side. Okay, let's go ahead and let's move that off out of the way. And I am going to bring in my bone folder because I'm a huge advocate of creasing up on those score lines especially if you're doing 3D projects or fun folds, you want to make sure that those lines are really well enforced. The very first thing we're gonna do is put the pieces and parts together before we assemble the fold, because this is really different tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these out of the way 
And this is actually going to act as the top piece of our card. And I'm just gonna put some designer series paper on here. Now I have a confession for you. The one in your project sheet has a different designer series paper because I design usually two to three weeks in advance. And I used a designer series paper that was in celebration, which just retired. But I know a ton of you already have it. So that's gonna give you another idea. And I'll show you that card too. But for tonight's demonstration, I'm using the Pansy Petals designer series paper. I love this spring motif. Like all the designer series papers with Stampin' Up, they are double-sided, giving you lots of options. One side typically has a genre, the other side is more generic, so you can use it all year round. And this is that gorgeous pale papaya. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put these two pieces together, and we're gonna start with this to add this to what's gonna be the cover of our card base. And this is the Stampin' Seal Plus. It's super duper duper strong, and I love to use that silicone craft sheet. And the reason is, is because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it because I tend to be kind of excited with my adhesive and it ends up all over my work surface and I fight it. So I'm going to flip this over as well. And I am going to go ahead and add that here. Now, you can see that Lisa's had a rough day, right? If you push too hard with the adhesive, it tends to want to pull on your cardstock. So here's a tip. Use a ginger touch. It'll come out and dispense beautifully. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work within the perimeter of the score line and the bottom of the card. So I'm just going to angle this here, give myself a little border all the way around, and we'll press that in place. Now I want to do a little something here on the cover just to make it kind of pretty. So let me bring in a scrap piece of very vanilla cardstock. Now this is a very vanilla base, so it's off-white. But some of the papers in this package have white, and I love how they work together. And you'll see that in just a little bit. So I've got that scrap paper here and I'm gonna grab my Memento Black ink pad and I am going to make an Easter card. So I've pulled out the words, Happy Easter. I'll show you the stamp set in just a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna stamp that here. Now I've got my stamp and scrub right off camera. That's how I choose to clean my stamps. You can use a chamois if you'd like. I find that that works beautifully. Now I'm gonna also bring in one of my very favorite die sets and it's this one. It's called Tasteful Labels. Lots of different shapes and sizes, great not only for greetings, but also for images, fantastic. So we're gonna use this tonight. And I went ahead and I pulled out this one from the die set, and I'm gonna lay this here. Now I'm gonna give you a little tip that you're gonna find really, really helpful tonight, not just for this one. This is the post-it note labeling and cover-up tape. The other products I'm using are all in my online store, however, I like to link some of these things that are not Stampin' Up! products that aid me in my paper crafting because if they make my life easy, they're going to make your life easy. You're going to be able to find these over on my website under the shop tab and then craft room favorites. So I'm just going to anchor that down and then I'm going to slide that through the die cutting machine. Now I did that ahead of time just to save a little bit of time and that left me with this. I love the tape and here's why. Once it's been die cut, this can be reused over and over again. And I'm gonna give you another tip about this and it's gonna be really important for the next thing that we're going to do. So we've got that. And then from that exact same die set, I pulled out this one, isn't this fun? And I did this one ahead of time and I did that from the same Calypso Coral cardstock that I did for the base of what's gonna be the card. Now, just to jazz this up a little bit, and I love to give you lots and lots of take tips. So let's go ahead and let's talk about how we can jazz this up. And I'm hoping that maybe I can give you some ideas on how to expound on the things that you already own. So the first thing I did was I pulled in some of my really pretty pale papaya ribbon. And you can see that it's sheer in the center, and I absolutely love this. But I want to attach it to the back of this. So this is where that silicone craft sheet is going to come in really handy. I'm gonna lay down a couple strips of adhesive across the back. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to fold this in half so I have a loop on one side. And I cut this a lot longer than I probably needed. And I am going to leave a little bit of that loop showing here on the left-hand side. And I want the other pieces here to go across the back. Now that tape is gonna help hold this in place. And here's the great thing about the Stampin' Seal Plus. If you decide you need a little bit more tape on top of each other, you can go ahead and add it here and that's gonna hold your strands in place. Once you have it where you want it, I'm gonna grab my scissors here and let's just give this a little bit of a haircut here and here. So we've got a little bit more of an area here that looks a little bit more defined. Now I'm gonna flip this over 
and I am going to add dimensionals to this. So let me go ahead and pull some of those off here. And I am very careful to make sure that these are well balanced. I have learned the hard way through many years of stamping that if you don't balance these on your images, when they go through the mail meter at the post office here in the US, it has rollers in it. It tends to have your cards coming out kind of lopsided. Now this is my take your pick tool and I cannot live without this thing. It's like my third hand. It's got a putty tip, which helps you pick up those small sequins and pieces of paper. It also comes with interchangeable ends. And this one is the paper piercing tool attachment. There's also a little spatula here. You gotta love that for getting up underneath those mistakes. And it also comes with a dual ended stylus tool. It is the best $10 you will ever spend and you will thank me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove those paper backings with that take your pick tool attachment. I have arthritis in my hands for those of you that don't know. And that really is difficult for me to peel things with that dexterity is kind of like gone. So I'm gonna add this here, just centered. And look how fun these two different shape labels work together. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I decided to add a little bit even more behind here. And again, these are all optional things, but I definitely wanted to show you how you can use some linen thread. Now, I wanted to add some emphasis behind here. And the one reason I love linen thread is its natural color, which is gonna be played up on the inside of this pop-up acetate card. Now, oftentimes we try to zigzag it this way, but I'm gonna give you another tip. Let's start by putting adhesive here on the back and I'm gonna put some generously down the middle here because that's gonna end up holding it. I use my hand because that's free and I got it. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave a raw end here at the bottom, like a tail, and I'm using my fingers as the width and I'm spreading it around and around. And you can determine how many times you wanna go around. You can do as many or as little as you want and I'm stretching this. So I'm just kind of want this loose and uneven. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack it right down here to the center. And that's got some loops on either side. Well, that's not real attractive just yet, but let me show you what we're gonna do next. Because there is adhesive here, you are able safely to take these and kind of separate them to get those really whimsical loops that you've seen on lots of other paper crafting projects. And you're like, how did they do that? Well, that's how I do it because it makes it quick and easy. And then you can trim up those little ends if they're a little bit wild for you. And you can just cut that down and we've got a little focal point here. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip this over again and we are gonna add more dimensionals. Sometimes the front of your car doesn't have to have all the, what I call the foo-foo stuff, right? And I'm gonna use that dimensional to hold this exactly where I want it. It can be a focal point. It can be a large greeting that's layered on pieces like this one. And it's a great way to leave the surprise for the inside of a fun fold card. And that's what we're doing tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. And then I'm gonna come back here to the front of the card. And then I am going to center this here. And I'm just going to attach it. Now I did forego gems. I know some of you are gonna be thinking, you're kidding me because I always use them but I did forego them tonight because I thought the paper was busy enough, but don't worry, I got another sample for you with this fun fold. All right, so this layer is done. Let's go back to this one. This now is going to actually go like this because these pieces are gonna have to come together. So let me show you what we're gonna do. This is going to be the inside of the card. And this is where we're gonna add some more layers of designer series paper because this is gonna be an important focal point to the card. So I've got some more of that pale papaya this is the same Pansy Petals Designer Series paper. I'm gonna flip this over and we're gonna add some adhesive to the back side. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, I've got a really strong feeling that this Designer Series paper is gonna be retired. Now the retired list is going to be coming out for you probably around April 1st. And I will guarantee you that this paper will sell out lickety split. So if you are loving it like I do, I'm gonna suggest that you go over to my online store and you purchase this Pansy Petals Designer Series paper while it's in stock. Now we're gonna add more adhesive here. Gosh, I've, you know, it's been a Monday for me. It really has. You ever have just days where things just don't go the way they're supposed to go? All right, so Lisa, don't press so hard. I guess I'm just too excited for this card. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to put this here on the inside. So I'm looking to leave that margin again all the way around, making sure I'm staying above that score line and we're gonna press that in place. All right, these pieces are gonna eventually come together. So remember, this is going to be the top 
and then this is going to be the bottom. All right, next thing we're gonna do now, I wanna make sure I've got this going the right way. Wouldn't that be horrible? Oh gosh, I think I did do it upside down. You know what, let's see if we can flip it. We are going to work on the mechanisms for the inside of this card. I've got them pre-cut for you here, but I wanna do some stamping first. So I've got some very vanilla scrap cardstock here, and I'm gonna bring in some extra scrap paper so it's not too distracting here. I am gonna be using the images from the stamp set that's called Easter Friends. Is this not adorable? But wait until you see the six cards I'm gonna be sharing with you tonight towards the end of this live stream. These other six cards, they're not all Easter, and I think you're gonna really, really enjoy it. So I've got my images already mounted. So let's start with my crumb cake ink. And this is where I pulled in that linen thread color, that natural color that goes well with every color palette. I've got my little bunny here. Look at that face. I'm gonna ink this up and I only need the top half for this one and I'm gonna stamp that here. Lots of pressure, make sure you trace out the design so that you have a really, really good image. Okay, I'm gonna tap off my excess ink and then I'm gonna take that over to my stamp and scrub and clean it. I am not gonna do any more in this color, so I'm just gonna close that up very quickly. And then I'm gonna move over to the pale papaya. Now this is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So remember we talked about that ink pad and we've already talked about that same color cardstock. They coordinate and they match beautifully just like the ribbon and the accessories. So here we've got our duck. Look at that, isn't that just so cute? All right, and then I'm gonna turn that paper because I'm using my scraps and I am taking that little chick and I'm gonna stamp that here. All right, so now we've got our images. Now for this card, in order for it to pop up, these images need to free form inside my card. So I'm going to grab my circle dies. Let me bring those in for you. And I've already pulled out a couple pieces here. The layering circles dies by far is probably my most widely used die set because who can draw a perfect, perfect circle and cut it out, right? I can't. So there's graduated sizes of both the plain and the scallop circles, and we are using both tonight. So what I did is I took my circle and I use this as a focal point. Remember that tape? This is where it's gonna be super important because there's nothing worse than your die shifting as you're trying to die cut it. So go ahead and grab that post-it note labeling cover-up tape, go right over your die, and you're going to die cut it, okay? Now I did that for each of these. Now you're gonna to notice too on the duck, it's not all gonna fit, which is fine, but I loved this little wing. So I was very careful when I did this to make sure I anchored it in the position that I wanted and of course the chick is gonna fit perfectly. So I did do those ahead of time. I saved this tape because I find that I can use it over and over at least a half a dozen times. Uh, this is the original roll that I bought, gosh, probably 18 months ago, and you can see that it's lasted me a long, long time. Now I did do those images ahead of time and I'm gonna share those with you, but I also want to share with you a little tip about what I did with my bunny. Now I want to give his cheeks and his nose a little bit of color and I have had a lot of questions from viewers about how to use the blender pen. Now I prefer to use the Stampin' Blends markers. I just love them, but I absolutely want to show you how to use this. Now this blender pen has a chemical in the barrel of the pen that moistens the tips. It doesn't matter which side that you use, you're gonna get about 100 uses from it if you use it correctly. So I'm gonna give you a little 411 on how to use it and I'm gonna tell you the best way to use it. First and foremost, I find that this pen is great for detailed images. I'm talking very detailed images that are outlined. Also, to take care of your pen, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you store it like this horizontally. You don't want one tip to be drained from the chemical that's inside the tip. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that ink pad and I'm gonna press with the palm of my hand and it's slightly flexible. And then I'm gonna open this up and you're gonna see that that's gonna give me a well of color here inside the lid. And that's fantastic because that's what I'm gonna to use to actually quote paint with. It does not matter which end that you use. They will become stained with the pigmentation of the ink, but as long as they run clear, you're good to go. And I'll explain that in just a minute. Ink from the ink pad is very concentrated when you're watercoloring. So when you go to pick this up, I want you to thin it out a whole lot. Remember, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So I'm gonna do a little bit on the nose here, and I'm gonna work on an angle on the cheek here, and an angle on the cheek here. 
This does make the paper slightly damp because of the chemical base. So it's very important that if you intend on doing more, that you let that evaporate a little bit before you add a second layer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just close this up because we are done with this for right now. And then I wanna show you how you clean this and put this away. You never wanna dip one color into the next without cleaning the brush. You're gonna hold it horizontally and you're gonna turn and you are gonna rotate. So I'm going all the way around the brush till it runs clear. Now you can see this is a very light color so it's gonna be really easy to do that. With dark pigmented shades, you're gonna to wanna to take your time. You wanna make sure that it's clean before you put it away. That is a great tip for adding color to those little tiny areas and using that chisel tip to your advantage there. All right, as I said to you, I had those images already die cut here. Let me pull those out. And here are the other two, all right? So we've got our images that we're gonna be working with. You'll also recall that I told you I took out the accompanying scallop circle die and I did those ahead of time as well. And those are here. So I've got one, two, and three. Now, in order to make up the pop-up mechanism, I also have three strips of window sheets. That's what they're called in my online store, better known as acetate, okay? These are one inch by about three and three quarters, but I'm going to tell you right now that you're probably gonna need to chop off a little bit depending on where you position them here. And I'll explain that to you now. Let's go ahead and let's get one of these ready first. I'm gonna turn my little chick over and I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back side. okay? I am going to take the window sheet and I'm going to position this as far near the top as I probably can, well, so it doesn't stick out, and we're gonna tack that in place. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more adhesive here to that acetate area. Remember, the stamp and seal is really, really, really strong. Look what I did. This is the kind of day I've had, my friends. Have you ever done this when you were stamping and you're like, I put it on all crooked? Oh, heavens. All right, let's fix that. All right, no one's going to see this. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> okay. And now this is going to get sandwiched between here. This is going to ensure now that you're not going to see that ugly adhesive section in the back. All right, so we've got one. Let's see if I can redeem myself on the next one. We're going to add our adhesive here. And let's do this the right way. We're going to add this here. Let's go like this. Isn't this easier? Let's go like this. Let's make sure it's not sticking out. And let's look. Yep, that's good. And then we're going to add a little bit more adhesive here. And then we're going to add that pale papaya. Now we do have one more. I'm also going to tell you that when you were making this at home, if you are going to vary the size of the circle, you're going to need to keep in mind that they're going to come together on the inside of the cards. So you're going to want to be very, very careful. So I'm going to go ahead and take my duck and I'm going to place him here and then a little adhesive on the back, and then we're gonna sandwich this one as well. So now we have our three mechanisms all put together. Now we've got the little scallop on this little guy here. All right, let's put these off to the side. I will tell you, as I started to fold this, I started to have a mini panic moment thinking, Lisa, did you do this wrong? <laughs> I think I did. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm the only person who's gonna have a decorated back. All right, again, don't tell anybody. We are gonna end up sandwiching them between these layers, but let's go ahead and let's add one more layer to what's gonna be the inside of the card. You know, I always say if I mess it up, I'm gonna send it to my mom because she loves everything that I do. Isn't it good that our moms love everything that we do, that we create? I know it started when I was in kindergarten and it hasn't stopped and I'm really grateful for that. My mom always says, if you mess it up, send it to me, no one will ever know. Here's the good news, when you leave me tonight, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to decorate the inside of the upper inside of that card. And it's going to be just as cute. But the good news is I have several others that are finished so that you can see them correctly where the designer series paper is in the right place. All right, front, inside. This is going to go here. Let's see if I can redeem myself now. And I'm going to add that here. This, my friends, is a really pretty back. It should go here. All right, we're just going to bypass that. I've got others to share with you. Now, really important before these pieces go together that you're going to get a visual idea of what's going to happen. These are going to become the pop-up and they're going to be really interactive for this. I decided that I wanted the crumb cake bunny in the center. Two reasons. It's a different color. And secondly, it is the larger of the images. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's put this off to the side. And the next thing that I decided to do was use Terran tape. 
So let's work. Uh, you know what? Now that we've already messed up this one, let's go ahead and let's put it on this side. It doesn't matter which of these two ends you use. I'm going to add it here. Look at that pretty back. Oh, heavens. <laughs> and then I'm going to put another one here. You know, the one thing about live stream, you guarantee you never know what's going to happen. And I am far from perfect. I always say you should see my trash can. It's full of rejects. And then I am going to take off that paper backing here and here. Now, tear and tape is stronger than your typical adhesive. And it's one reason that I like to use it because I don't have to worry about things falling apart. Super duper sticky. All right. Next thing I want you to know is I'm going to recommend that you work upside down. So remember, this is going to be the inside of the card. I'm going to take this bunny image upside down and he's going to typically go in the center. Now, let me tell you something I learned today when I was making this for the second time. Believe it or not, I practiced before you joined me. I found working from the outside in was better because I could never gauge perfectly where the center was. And that left me trying to lift these. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my little duck and I'm gonna adhere this, but I wanna show you something. This cannot stick out past this layer here, which is the pale papaya that matches this. Otherwise it's gonna show when the card is closed. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work here near the end and I'm looking to adhere this here. I gotta stay within the perimeter of the card. And then I'm going to take my little chick, which is going to be the other end face down. And that is going to go here, working within the perimeter of the card. Oh, that one might be close. Okay. And then this one here, great tip for you. You can change the heights on all of these, which means some can be a little bit taller. Some can be shorter. You can stagger them. There's a ton of ways that you can make this lots and lots of fun. Now, do you see why it's so important? that the circles stay a relative size. Otherwise, three of them would not fit, would they? So I've got a little space between them. So I'm just gonna give those a good press. Remember that tear and tape is super strong. These pieces now have to come together. So I'm gonna add just a little bit extra adhesive here over that acetate. Just wanna make sure I'm getting it on there really good. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to sandwich this together. Now the easiest way for me to do that is to hold it up primarily because I would have to put my head in the camera to get down over the top. So I'm gonna hold it sideways so that you can see. I've got my finger between here so that it doesn't stick, hopefully, where I don't want it. You know, the way things are going tonight, you just never know, right? And then I'm gonna place these together at the top. Do you see it's kind of like a book binding where it goes together and then we're gonna press. There's that pretty back. All right, let's push, all right. Let me take a quick look. Okay. Other than it not decorated on the inside, it came out really quick. Are you ready? One, two, three. Happy Easter. Look at this. Is this not adorable? So when you open it up, it pops up. The images are actually floating on the card. And if you really want to get zealous, you can do both sides. Here's another idea for you. These could be photographs. You know, those small wallet size photographs would be great for a baby announcement. You could put, it's a boy, it's a girl, we're engaged. I mean, you can just do all kinds of things to create this card. Now, let me show you what the inside was supposed to look like. <laughs> so the designer series paper would have been here. Here's the one I played with, and I staggered these a little bit different on this one. But you can see that this is the same card. Now, you'll recall in the beginning that I mentioned to you that I had actually created the original in your project sheet with different papers. Now, I have that one too, and that one is here. So this uses the re just recently retired free celebration designer series paper. It was called Daffodil Afternoon. And I'm going to tell you right now, it was a huge seller. So you probably have it. Okay. And then here is the card. I wish I could fit the whole thing inside the camera view. Isn't this adorable? So different colors, different papers. This one uses these amazing classic matte dots as my embellishment. If you buy no other embellishment, consider these. The white, the vanilla, the gray, and the black are going to go with everything. You cannot go wrong. Now, you may recall that I told you I have six other cards to share with you. And while I'm grabbing those, tell me which of these two designs you like better. Let me reach in and pull those out. All right. These six cards that I'm going to show you now are all part of this month's online card class. And all of them use the Easter Friends stamp set. So I'm giving you more ideas. My class requires a $50 product order, anything you want. You can buy whatever you want, it doesn't matter. If you don't want this, you can use what you have at home. 
all the cards are adaptable. Here are the fun folds first. So here's the first one. So look at that little bunny. Look at the flowers in her hair. Now, obviously, if you want your cards to look identical to mine, there is a complete list of supplies over on my website at lisastampstudio.com. Click on shop and online card class. So there's the first one. Now here's the second one. Now I really played with this because I wanted this to be the card on the inside. So we've got a fun breakaway front. I know you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, is this adorable. Now it's really important that if you're going to be placing an order for the online card class that you use the exclusive card class host code you'll see here on the screen. Here's a baby card. So we've got two Easter cards so far. Are you ready? So this opens up, this opens up. And I absolutely love how the words to different stamp sets that Stampin' Up! sells all work together. So sweet little baby, one happy family, congratulations. Isn't this adorable? Okay, so that's three. And then this is the last fun fold. So who said that this card actually had to be for babies or Easter, right? So I added some balloons for this one and this one's got a fun expansion on it. And I did mix and match some other greetings to get these cards here. So that's your four fun folds. In addition to a full length video to make all six cards with me from home, you're going to get a 19 page PDF tutorial. There are going to be three templates for these fun folds. So it's packed full of information. So I use this one as a friend card. Isn't this so cute? Look at the inside of this one. And again, you can mix and match with what you've got at home. You do not have to buy what I use. And here's your sixth card. So please keep that in mind. So full length PDF tutorials, 19 pages long with templates, as well as the full length video to stamp with me from home. Now there's only one exception to using the host code. If your order is large, which is how mine usually are, $150 or more, don't use the host code because Stampin' Up! is going to give you Stampin' Rewards for an order that big. But if it's intended for card class, you need to let me know. Otherwise, I have no way of knowing since you didn't use the host code. Just contact me on my website and let me know, hey, Lisa, order number so-and-so was for card class, and you'll be able to receive the full-length video and the 19-page PDF tutorial. But all my customers for card class also receive a private invitation to join me on a private YouTube link right here called Live with Lisa. It's held once a month and I do two live demonstrations and they get a huge bundle of free PDF tutorials for the taking all as my thank you. And I also include some product prize patrol for random winners. It's lots and lots of fun, much smaller group, very, very personal. Now, if you're wondering, can I get the PDF tutorial without placing an order? Perhaps you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And the answer is yes, you can. It does not include the video. That is exclusive to the card class. But the PDF tutorial is available on my website under shop under the PDF tutorial library. You'll be able to find it there. It's an immediate download. I charge $1 per page, and that includes all the pictures, cutting dimensions, supplies, and step-by-step -step instructions. Now, while you're over there on my website, do me a favor, scroll all the way to the bottom and be able to click on subscribe because you're going to want to sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter. Every Thursday, I send out a newsletter that includes a tutorial project not shared on any of my other platforms, and I sure would love to include you. I think that's it. Now, before we go, I want to make sure you know you can request a catalog over on my website. And I also want to make sure you mark your calendar and subscribe if you're not already subscribed here to my YouTube channel. Click that little bell and the word all so that YouTube will send you reminders. I will be back live with you next Monday, which is March 14th, and you're not going to want to miss this card. In addition to a fun fold, I have a really fun technique with the paper that I cannot wait to share with you. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here with me, and I hope you'll join me next week here on Lisa Stamp Studio. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.